Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop and creating a binary code pattern and manipulating it in a number of ways. So I've got this design here. This one's actually from my library. I thought I'll just quickly put one on there to show you but how to create something like this. Well, there's of course numerous ways and depends what you want to do with it, whether it's worthwhile doing some of the things. So I'm just going to remove it. Now I'm only using a thousand by thousand as a document size. Of course you could go for something larger than that, 3000 by 3000, whatever. But our first thing I always generally do, and you don't have to do this, but I like to do it, is view and new guide layout. And for that, I'm going to go with eight by eight. Well, for the purpose of the video, I might actually reduce it down. But you can see if you've got eight by eight or 10 by 10 or 50 by 50, obviously there's more chance to make more variety and therefore you won't spot patterns coming through. But if you're going to go, and I'm just doing it for the purposes of this video, four by four, just make it a bit easier. So I click OK. So, but then clearly when you've got zero, one, zero, one, you're going to see very common patterns all the way through it. So for the next thing to do, now I'm not going to use this per se, this grid, it just creates a nice self. I could use a grid instead, but it's just nice to know where your sort of general layout. So I'm going to click on there, and obviously I don't want a lot of lips because I want a zero. And I'm going to resize it. And this is one issue, maybe you might have to like zoom in, zoom out. Because sometimes I always find that it's very hard to select and drag, sometimes get so close you can't access it unless you zoom in and zoom out, which is not always what I want to do. So I've got this design here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that by holding down the Alt or Option key. You can just do that very simply. So you've got two designs now. Now what I want there is not zero, I want one. Now this is a binary code, so it's one and zero. And that's what I'm going to Now you could go, of course, for a completely different font, different colors. You could maybe have green there, I could do that now. So I go for green, and I could change the font. It doesn't have to be the same font. And of course, you don't even have to have a one. You could go for a zero and two if you want to have a binary system, just as reasonable. It's obviously just needs two numbers. What you can do, you can change the font, and let's go for something like that, just something different. So you've got there. And you could also, of course, add effects to it as well. So maybe go for a layer, and you could go down to a layer style and maybe go for drop shadow. Just something very basic. There's a drop shadow there, drop shadow selected there, and you could just create that. Okay, so you've got that design. Well, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to convert them. You don't have to do this. You could actually use these zero and one and just put them all over there, and that's perfectly reasonable. But if you want to say change something later, you think I want uniformity of that zero. Or you can convert it into a smart object. So a layer and smart objects. And as I said, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to have that, you could just have zero and you could change them all over the place. You could draw on them, do lots of things. You can't draw on a smart object. So you've got that problem. But you could add effects and all those sorts of things, which are not sort of modifying or affecting ultimately the design there. They're just on top of it in the layers. So if you've got layers, there's my layers panel. You can see there you've got all the various things. You got your smart objects and you can add those to your heart's content. But also I'm just going to go there as well. So I'm just going to go to, and you can see it's a smart object because of that little one there, layer, and smart object, convert to smart object. Now it's all a smart object. Now as a smart object, any change that might to one will be modified throughout. And I'm going to duplicate this design. So I'm just going to put one in different places. You know, you can do it completely different. You don't have to follow, obviously, this one, but I'm just going to spread it over. Different. And you can see when you've got on your 4x4, four four, it's very hard to actually spread it out nicely. So you have, you can end up with lots of zeros, lots of ones together, which is maybe not your one. And this is another problem, like I said, when you go, sometimes you find that you can't edit, especially if you've got very, if you've got lots of cells, if you've got maybe 100 cells, it makes it very hard sometimes, unless you zoom in, to actually get this band box or move things around because it will just suddenly select something, not what I want. And then let's have another one, just a one over there. And you see, I'm not really making any effort to put it in all rows. You can do that later. But what I just want it just for the cell, so I can sort of rough idea where it is. And you can see straight away, I'm obviously gonna get a few zeros in line, I've got zeros there. So you can, you'll be able to see that if you made a pattern of this. 
not ideal. But again, hold down the alter option key and duplicate that. And maybe again, select that one, add another one there. And maybe finally, zero, oh, I can see another slot. And my problem, <laughs> right. So I've got this design up, so I've got a few more zeros, I think, than ones. Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be uniform. The numbers don't have to be proportional. So what you can do, you've got this, and now you can, if you want them all to be nicely in a row, nicely in columns, and you don't have to, of course, you can just go up here to the alignment, and you can click those, you can select all of those designs again, and again, quickly align them. You see they weren't, they were slightly there, but yeah, slightly out, and slightly out, and again, down that way, go to that one, Now the, the, these guides were purposely just so I could see the structure of the cells, so I didn't have them all over the place. And then finally finish off there. Now of course what you want is this to be fairly well in the centre of the grid. If you have it crunched up against, say if you have that right up against the edge, then when you obviously it's going to make it look a bit odd when you've got the one there that's if it's crunched up, it's all going to be crunched up. So it's nice to have them all with that spacing around them, the padding around them. So now you've got your design. So what you can do, you can go to edit and you can define the pattern. Simple as that. So you've got your pattern design there. Let's just quickly create another document, file a new, again go for a thousand by a thousand. I flatten up. And what I can do, I can fill that design. So I'm just going to go for layer and new fill layer and pattern. I could also drag it from the design. I'll do that as well, just to quickly show. So click OK. Always select the one you don't want, but there's one. And there's probably another one I did earlier and a couple others there. But you can see the design there. And now, of course, what you can do, and I'm just so you can actually see it's a sort of pattern design, you can go like that. You can see, you can, <laughs> there's a, obviously a clean, and that's the reason with the problem with the four by four. So you've got 10, so 10, and you can just do that. And of course you can modify the angle as well, 825, move that around, and so on and so on. So you can create a variety of different of these binary code patterns. Now I'm not, I don't want to keep it like that, I'm just gonna make that a bit better scale than that, so 50. So you can actually see it. So you can see the design. And what you can also do, of course, you can duplicate the design. So you can always just go over here, walk up here, layer, and duplicate layer. So you've got two then, and then you can double click on that, and you may be able to change it if you want, or you could just move it. And of course, the trouble is with this one, because I'm going to transparency, I could have saved it with, could have had some transparency into it, but I didn't. So what you can do, you can of course use blending modes. So you can always use darken, multiply, etc., and so on and so on. So you can see through that. Now I don't want to particularly use two patterns, but I'm just going to remove that. So you've got the design there. What you can also do, say you decide, you know what? I'm just going to remove the pattern itself. I don't want that colour there. I don't want one like that. What I want to do is I want to change it. Well, it's a smart object. So you simply go over there and I'm going to, what's there it is. So that's the one that's been selected here. So just double click and you go into this design. Now you see a problem with this smart object. It's crunched up against the side. It doesn't give any sort of like leeway on this. And of course you can always resize. I mean, I quite often do that. Sometimes you get problems with that as well. But uh, what often I do, I just actually resize, make it slightly smaller. You just have to maybe bake that in in the start. So you make it as big as possible and then you can of course shrink it down. Always, if you want to make it look nice, I think it's just keep it in the center so it's actually nicely uniform and center. If you put it aside, it's going to look so everything's going to be moved over a bit. And of course, you could rotate it, but you can also change it. It's still live, so you can just quickly go over there and type tool, and you can select that. Obviously, you can put it to two, three, whatever. You can change the color. So you go for orange, say and maybe change the effect. But I'm not going to do any more like that. But you can see what you can do, you can modify it in numerous ways. Void going over the edge. If you've got a shadow or something, you put a shadow in and it goes off the edge, you're going to get a sort of a cut in the design. So you'll see that annoying sort of shadow has been cut, which is not particularly, doesn't look very good. And you'll see it's a PSB file. This is a PSB file. It's not 
not real file. <laughs> it is a real file, of course, but it's internal. So you can close it and save. It's not saving it to anything particular. I suspect it's saving it to the disk and all that sort of stuff. I have no idea. So you've got your ones and the, everything is all the same. You can see it's all at the same angle and the color has been changed. And you can do the same with the O. And you can add, other, obviously, other paths. Decide there with the O. You can double click on that. You can look at that and you think, you know what? Let's just shrink that down a bit. Just make that a bit smaller. But also what you can do, you think, oh, you know what? I like, quite like that, but I'm just going to add, let's just go for uh, an ellipse. And at this point, of course, you find you can't modify that, which is very strange. Oh, it's on pixel. That's why it's, I wanted a shape. That helped. Yeah, doesn't, won't let me write to it, but I can do it with smart objects. I can just use, obviously, a shape layer. So I'm just adding a little dot there. Now you can see this obviously dot there. Close it again, save, and you've got the dot in the center of all those ones. Also, of course, you can if you want to recolor the whole thing with this as well, what you can do, now you could do this at this point, you could do it this point, but you can also do it when you're actually using the pattern itself. But I'm just going to go here, layer, and I can go to uh, new adjustment layer, and maybe go for, now, of course, I'm make best thing to do is go to the top one. If you don't do that, it's going to put it somewhere else. But I want it at the top, so I want it to affect everything. So layer and new adjustment layer, and let's just go for, let's go black and white. Let's just go black and white, click OK. And you can see it's all turned black and white. And you can modify that, of course. And you've got your pattern design. And of course, you can come back and you can remove this if you don't want this. So you've got that design, that's all of them affected by that, and you can remove it at any time, just delete it. So just go down here and delete it, the layers. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna define that as a pattern. If it lets me, ah, now let's just deselect the whole lot. Define the pattern. That's what I wanted. It's weird, it doesn't actually let you define the pattern when you've got the adjustment, as if it thinks that, oh, you know what, I don't want to, <laughs> you're defining the adjustment layer. Very odd, obviously, because you can't. Obviously, there's nothing in it, so you can't really define it as a pattern. But you think it would realize, I want the stuff underneath. Click OK. So it's all defined as a pattern now. Of course, once you've done that, what you can do, you can go back here, and you can then, of course, now what you can also do, you can go over here, to patterns, and I'm just going to quickly go to window. Got so many other ones there. Patterns, and you got your patterns there. See so patterns. You can simply drag over there, and you can then, of course, once you've done that, you can move there. You've got the thing. Double click on that again, and you can change that. So say, make it 50. So you can see you can create a lovely black and white design as well. But what you can also do, let's just remove that one. Say you decide you've got an image or something, and obviously I haven't here, but say I have. So I've got some, I've created some design here very quickly. And I've got a, I can make a little selection here. So I've got elliptical marquee tool, and I've got a design. Imagine this is an image, you want to put some, this code into the image. Or what you can do, you can simply make that selection, obviously you can sort of define that area, whatever means you want with selections. And then once you've done that, you can then, okay, you can find the patterns, patterns there. So you can, Use that one, you use that one or that one. I'm going to use that one. You can simply drag that over and it's defined, it's put into that design. And again, with that, let's go to window and layers. You can see there, you've got that mask there and you've got your pattern design and you can still edit it. So double click on that. And again, you can change that to say 50. So you think, oh, that's 50. Or maybe maybe the angle of the shot makes it suggest that you want it slightly turned around. Unfortunately, you can't do it in 3D space. That would be very nice. But unfortunately, that veil is not available. So what you can do, you can say 34. So you can just tw turn it around as if it's like looking on a sort of a sheet of paper, this angle. So click OK. So you can do that. Also, what you can do, of course, let's go back to the original design over here. You've got this design. And you can always add all of the design, if you want to, into your library. So you've got your libraries over here, and you can just select all of that design. Now, of course, if I select all of that, let's just 
go with that. And also the black and white. Let's just go for the whole thing. And I can actually, what I can do, I can also go to layer and smart objects, convert to smart object. So I can turn it into a smart object. So it's all in one single smart object. Well, I can, what I can now do, and let's just drag, I can drag it to my libraries. And you can find libraries, window and libraries. Oh, I just see the rain coming down outside. It's really coming down now. What you can do, you can drag it over. Just drag that over and you'll just get a little plus. And it will just then save it. And you've got your PSP. So what you can do, you can remove that. And of course, you've got your libraries. It's really great for future work. So if you think, you know what, I've got some patterns, I've got a binary code pattern, it's over here already, it's stored away in your library. You can simply drag it over and you've got your design there. And of course, what you've got is you can just turn, you've still got access to, you've got here, layers. It's just an object here. You can double click into that and you see you've got access again to your black and white. You can modify that and all those sort of things. So you can change it, tweak it, and that sort of thing. Again, it's that PSP format. So close that again, didn't change anything. So you can see you can go back again with the libraries, super useful feature. And of course you can apply effects and many, many more things as well with this design. And also you can go to here and modify this, apply effects to this as well. So you can distort it, change it, modify it in numerous ways. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, and many other applications. Also, if you've got any comments, anything I've done wrong, anything you think I should try and explain maybe a bit better, please let me know. Always uh, happy to explain things, maybe in the comments. If people obviously put some comments, always happy to answer those. A dislike or like, always appreciated. Whichever way you want to put, perfectly reasonable. And also, thank you very much.